Mm. Hello and welcome to Story on the Spot. My name is Jim Heskin. I'm the arbiter of this grand experiment that has been running for 32 weeks straight. Right over here is Mr. R.A. McGee. Says John Michael Kane down there. Max Gitterdun, a.k.a. Kevin Tumlinson. And also down here, Thack Attack is back, Jack. That is Mr. Nick Thacker. And we will begin the show right after our intro. So, like I said, welcome to Story on the Spot. How's everybody doing today? We good? What up? We're doing. We're what doing. <laughs> yeah. And uh, if you don't know, if you viewer don't know what Max Gitterdun is, then you need to go listen to episode 31 from last week because there was a lot was, of getting things done. That was my brother, John Gitterdun. <laughs> <laughs> And also, as a result of last week, I've created a, a new graphic. I'm not sure where we're going to put it yet, but this will... Mm. I feel like when the situation is right, I'll know when it's time to use this graphic. Mm. When the situation calls for it. Indeed. That's fair. That's fair. <laughs> It'll present itself. <laughs> All right. So this is episode 32, and we have some housekeeping. Last week's winner, Mr. R.A. McGee. Yay! Yay. Amazing. Yay. Amazing. I never win. What a shocker. <laughs> <laughs> I, I use the secret phrase like 20 times in every story, but no, <laughs> not enough. Sorry, Kevin. And uh, <laughs> hey, viewer, here's how you do this. Let me put the banner that also explains that. So you're going to watch each pitch. What we're going to do is probably three to four rounds here. Where I'm going to give everybody a story prompt. And then these three authors are going to create pitches off the top of their heads. They have not seen these stories in advance. Uh, then you watch each pitch in a round and then vote by comment below which one you like. And then next week, tune in to see the winner. And in between, go to storyonthespot.live where you can find all of our websites and our free books and links to all our books that we're selling, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. That's it. It's just three authors and their pitches. Three authors and their right, pitches. pitches. Mm. Okay. Today's bonus pitches. word. <laughs> Leave. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Today's bonus word is bloviate, which is a verb meaning to talk at length, especially in an inflated or empty way. All right. I think if we are ready to go, we can get into our first story pitch. Okay. This is round one. It's called Unclear on the Concept. Charlene Smith passes a book donation box in Johnstown, Pennsylvania on her daily walks, and lately she's become concerned about the bags of raw meat she regularly sees left hanging on the side of the box. She has seen both fresh and frozen meat left at the box, and even stranger, someone keeps taking them. Nick noped right out of here on that one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Meat box, I'm out. I'm, I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready to go on this one. I'm ready to go on this one. All right, all right. Let's let's hear our first pitch. What do you got? Great. So, uh, Pennsylvania. Uh, I think you guys are maybe uh, familiar with uh, the concept uh, that's been floating around for a long time, but maybe a fine point was put on it in the book American Gods that uh, people's beliefs, belief systems, are what what cause some of these entities to to, to exist in the world. And, you know, in Pennsylvania, you know, it was kind of a uh, colonized by like, you know, Dutch people and some of the Euro European people, the Germans and stuff like that. And so they have a, um, a rich history in believing in things like, like trolls and, and things like that. You know, that's where, you know, the original like Grimm's fairy tales came from and things like that. So what I think we have here is, uh, the last troll, okay, that exists in the whole country because not a lot of people believe in trolls anymore. And uh, he lives in the woods outside this town in Pennsylvania, and uh, he's extremely lonely, uh, but he happens to be literate. And so he wants to read and he wants to enrich his troll life and learn more about the humans that he lives apart from. Well, the problem is, you know, trolls don't really have a currency system so what he does is he the only thing that has value in troll society other than bridges you know this guy doesn't have a bridge that he can give people 
is uh, is food, is meat. And so what he does is uh, every time that he gets uh, some fresh meat, he kills something. He takes part of it uh, to the library book donation thing. And then he takes a book back with him. And so that's his way of contributing uh, to the world while still saying reclusive and learning more about uh, about humans. So I think we have a, a kindly troll who's trying to better himself. The kindly troll. Thank you, R.A. McGee. All right, let me put the story back up here for a few seconds. Nick or Kevin, who wants to go next? I I'll This go. is the first time I'm reading it. Okay, I'll leave it up here so you can <laughs> think go. about it for a minute. I'll go. I'll go. Uh, is it okay if I go? Are we clear yeah, for me to go? Of course. Okay. That <laughs> was just clear. me stalling a few <laughs> seconds to get uh, So what we've got uh, is a uh, the presence of a um, someone who's practicing dark arts who also has a child who has been watching them. And what's happened is they're, they're experimenting with drawing uh, these like carnivorous demon beings uh, upward, and they want it. They want to refine their skill and, and be able to target specific people. So what they've done is placed a curse on this uh, donation box. And anyone who uh, opens the box draws out this this creature that will devour them. And the the child of this person learns of the curse and decides they've got to do something to protect people. So they've started hanging meat there, and the meat satisfy the carnivorous demons and they leave the people alone uh so that's only a temporary solution though so what, what we'll see evolve over the course of the story is uh the child is trying to figure out how to counter this curse while the parent is actually trying to figure out how to increase the accuracy and go after a specific target and then we'll learn that that specific target is a uh, local political candidate who likes to get up and bloviate uh, and uh, expound on uh, their their uh, their political beliefs. And so this, this this child is actually out to save our democracy in Pennsylvania at the box. Um, <laughs> what a patriot. Nice. <laughs> He's a patriot. <laughs> and the okay. title of the story is Patriot Demon Fighter. There you go. Patriot Demon Fighter. All right, Nick, what do you got? Patriot. Um, I apologize. I've got nothing. I'm going to have to pass this one because my I got a new computer and everything over here is blowing up. So I'm trying. I can't really hear okay. much that's happening. I think I'm I think I'm good now, but I had to switch internets a couple times and my nothing's working. So sure. Blame it on the Internet. <clears throat> I, I will. I did. <laughs> that's that's <laughs> the vanilla. That's the vanilla. Vanilla Millie, what, van, Vanilla Billy, what, what was the name of that group? <laughs> Millie Vanilli. Millie Vanilli. Millie Vanilli. <laughs> Would have been a hilarious joke had I remembered the name of the group. <laughs> so close. <laughs> <laughs> so close. <laughs> Vanilla Millie. <laughs> that's that's the title of this episode. Vanilla Millie. That's, Vanilla that's pretty Millie. good. All right. Um, Okay, so Nick, this is – you weren't here last week for this, and I'm certain you didn't watch last week's episode. So let me explain this to you. This is called Puff Pass. This is kind of like Interrupter except without having um, – like uh, the, st the story ends whenever it feels natural. So the point is I'm going to give a prompt. Anybody can go. And then at the end, when you're ready to stop talking, you pass it to someone specifically and feel free to write yourself into a corner and then make someone else continue the story. And then we'll stop when it feels right. Okay. Sorry. Okay. I, Jim, I, I can't hear anything. Okay. I, I can't see the screen either. So sorry. I'm trying to fix it. I don't know what's going on. Everything is okay. everything's working fine until the freaking call started. Okay, so here's our pitch. We'll just try to muddle through this as best we can. Ethan Hunt has been tasked with apprehending Laura Croft for violating international law. Okay, so uh, Ethan Hunt is at the Mission Impossible Force headquarters, and he gets uh, he gets his next mission. Um, actually, you know, I take that back. Let me, let me do that. Over. Should Ethan you Hunt, choose uh, to accept it? it. Ethan Hunt is, uh, uh, deep sea diving, deep sea free diving, right? A hundred meters below, below the surface. And 
a little submarine comes up, right, with a little device. And when he opens it up, it's like a little picture that plays giving him his next assignment, right? And he watches it, and he finds out that last week in London, Lara Croft crashed a plane into a convention center, right, on top of a bunch of people, uh, killing them instantly. So if you guys remember our story last week, Kevin crashed Laura Croft into all those people at the convention center. So that crime has come back to, to haunt her. And so Ethan gets the message. He gets the memo. Your mission, should you choose to accept it? He accepts it. It explodes in the water, right? It self-destructs. And he starts the long, arduous process back to the surface, right? He breaks the surface. And the first thing he says is, Kevin. Uh, allow me to bloviate. <laughs> uh, and the, that's the key phrase that brings the uh, helicopter to him in the middle of the ocean. They drop the ladder down, he climbs up, and he fly, they fly back to uh, the mainland, where he is given a much fuller brief, files uh, team, and discovers that Lord Croft has actually been going around crashing things uh, into conference centers and hotels and things all over the world. So um, now he's chasing her from nation to nation, uh, trying to determine the why of it. This doesn't fit her profile. This isn't what she does. She's a tomb raider, for God's sake. There's not even a tomb around uh, in these places. So uh, he suspects she's being controlled by a shadow organization. Uh, and he's starting to see hints of that. He's, going, he's uncovering uh, little clues is that make him believe that she's being manipulated, maybe blackmailed uh, or something, uh, and being forced to do uh, these, these, commit these acts. And I want to pass it to Nick, but I don't know if he's ready. No. So back to you, Arnie. No, we can't even hear him. <laughs> okay, right on. And so, and so he sets out to chase her, but as we all know, uh, uh, Ethan Hunt is kind of a hard, hard lined guy. Um, and he's also very emotional. You know, he's still kind of reeling over the kidnapping and loss and divorce of his wife, right? Who was a, a pretty brunette woman. And so he knows that he's got to stop Laura Croft, but he doesn't know if he's strong enough to do it. Well, he eventually tracks her down and he says, you know, I'm here to bring you in for all your crimes. And she says, I, I, I didn't do any of this stuff. I'm framed. And of course, he believes her because he's a sucker for a pretty face. And as they're speaking, right, the door blows off of the room that they're in. Bow, right? And it's Blowfield from Spectre, right? That's the shadow organization that's been uh, uh, framing Laura Croft and making her do all these missions. So Blowfield breaks in with his many, many minions, and he looks at them and he says... Kevin. Allow me to bloviate. <laughs> yes, I'm so glad you did that. <laughs> I'm so glad you did that. Oh, and at that moment, he's got a gun trained on Laura Croft, but she says, "Wait one moment." And reaches and pulls off her mask, and it's Ethan Hunt. And now we have to deal with two Ethan Hunts. <laughs> and so Ethan Hunt. Pulls off his mask, <laughs> and it's the guy from uh, Top Gun. <laughs> Maverick. It's Maverick. Maverick. <laughs> the end. Yay! I, don't, I didn't Yay. know who the inspector was. Who was the inspector? What did I miss? What was, who was that? Huh? The inspector? You, you said inspector. Or some inspector. I missed that part. Yeah. Never mind. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry. I don't remember. Oh, allow Spectre. me to blow oh, Specter. Specter. Yeah, the, the group, like S P E C T R E. Oh, Specter. Oh, okay. Yeah, from James Bond. Yeah. Uh, from James Bond. Okay. Yeah. Here we go. And Nicholas, can you hear us? No, I can hear you. Man. I can hear you guys. Well, fine. I said Blowfield, and I was like, man, I wonder if he's going to say Blowfield. Blowfield. After this. <laughs> can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you, Nick. Earlier. Yeah, we can hear you just we, fine. We can hear you. And we can see you. My yeah, computer but... just locked me out of everything. Computer, mouse, like nothing. I couldn't nothing. I could see and hear you guys, but that was it. Crazy. 
yeah, it's been super fun. <laughs> All right. Does anybody have any breaking news? Anything to announce or promote today? I can I can shamelessly say that my uh, my box set that I talked about last week uh, it's live and it's ninety nine cents on all of the Amazon stores. Uh, you know, it's got a couple hundred good reviews. There's four books in it, and uh, people really uh, really enjoy it. So if you need something to read, go for the box set. Uh, it'll be ninety nine cents for another day or so, uh, and enjoy. All right, what's the name of that box set? Uh, it's called the Porter Series, Volume One. Porter Series Volume One. Okay, mm -hmm. I got something to announce. Today, I started writing my first private investigator mystery, and I think it's oh, going to be cool. a lot of fun. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. I was terrified to start this because it's different, but I took my time to outline it and make sure that I knew what I was doing, and I started it today, and I think it's going to be pretty fun. Do you find erotica different than thrillers? <laughs> um, I think I said private investigator. Didn't I say private investigator? If anybody can yeah. write about a dick, it's you. <laughs> there, oh, they don't investigate privates in your... Okay, sorry. No, I had a different right. kind of understanding of what you said there. I think that was the wrong emphasis on the syllable. Private um, dicks. Well, I'd rather read the other thing. <laughs> All right, everyone. Great. Thanks for your feedback. Okay, moving on. This ah, is I guess I don't have any news or anything. I'm, either, I'm excited. Do you, do you guys have news, Nick? Kevin, I got a new computer that's probably going in the trash can as soon as I get off this phone call. <laughs> Kevin, do you have anything to announce? Uh, I'm going to be salvaging a computer out of someone's trash soon. <laughs> <laughs> Come on over, man. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Right, no, see, Nick's got the ultimate like eat, like uh, bad guys layer. He's on an island surrounded by sharks. <laughs> and one crappy computer. <laughs> It was his only flaw, the computer. Right. Could have had world domination if he just mm -hmm. had a working PC. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is round three. This is called Big Blue Spheres. If you've been watching and you haven't voted on your favorite pitches yet, go ahead. But I must say, if Nick ends up winning this episode, then we're going to have to have an investigation into voter fraud, possibly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, this is called Big Blue Spheres. The mayor of Udenburg, Belgium said it was an accident that the new Christmas decorations the town installed resemble a part of the male anatomy. City officials had set out to create lighted columns that looked like candles, but decided to do something different and placed blue spheres on top instead of flames. You see it, right? Okay. I only realized they looked phallic when they were illuminated, Mayor Anthony Dumar said. We just can't get away from dicks, can we? <laughs> That's just going to be the theme of this show. And we keep wondering why we have no female uh, co-stars <laughs> come on. Female. We can't get any women to come on the show. Yeah. Okay, who wants uh, to be the first? Okay, so... Kevin's what, got it. What seems like an innocent mistake is actually a nefarious plot by a Belgian sex cult who are trying to summon their powerful sex god uh, to allow them to conquer first Belgium and then the world. Um, so what we're, what our hero ends up uncovering is that uh, this, this was no accident. This was actually planned. And uh, he realizes like he's actually, he's an archeologist. So he studies uh, all kinds of ancient cultures and he just happened to, to have been recently uh, studying an ancient temple that had a configuration very similar to what the uh, giant candles um, look like. Uh, a series of columns with uh, little smudge pots on top, all in the shape of, of giant penises. So he recognized immediately what this was. And so he goes to try to lend a hand and, of course, gets embroiled in a, uh, a battle um, with these, the cult leaders. Um, who uh, attempt to explain everything uh, to him in great detail, blow the, uh, the story to him. You didn't tell me whether I could use it, uh, whether I had to use it as bloviate or could say bloviating. We need to be clearer. Uh, yes. But they blow Derivations of the word are fine, I think. <laughs> uh, and, uh, uh, but they are, uh, he, he's trying to confront them and uh, they come after him with their weapons of choice. I can't do it. I was going. I was Don't. going. I can't do it. Don't. I can't do it. Thank you. I just, <laughs> the end. <laughs> I, <laughs> so close. So close. All right. All right, Nick. 
Um, yeah, I got something. Um, I, I think, you know, this is classic. Did you guys miss this? Classic, classic case of, uh, come on, Kevin. Come on, get in there, man. Get in there. Mm, mm, classic case. There it is. Oh, yeah. Of a, uh, of a nefarious plot, uh, similar to Kevin's, but better, um, where uh, ah. we have the mayor of a town who, uh, who's in bed with an organization um, that is uh, actively working on um, identity theft. Uh, and they're trying to, to glean uh, personal information off of uh, pretty much anyone. And so their, their, t- their trial run, what they've decided is that they, um, they're going to bloviate the masses. Is that, did I use it? No. Okay. Um, and uh, <laughs> I got to catch up. That's all. I'm just saying. <laughs> that you know, works, that works. I don't think it means what um, you think it means. <laughs> their, their bloviated heads came up with this idea. Um, see, what's funny is you guys know what I'm trying to say using the wrong word because I'm a writer. So I'm doing that. That's pretty cool, right? Um, uh, <laughs> they, uh, they they get together and they decide, here's what we're going to do, guys. We're going to um, we're gonna bloviate the shit out of this by trying to um, get people's credit card information um, as they're just walking around town. And so they pick Belgium uh, where they're, this mayor um, they've done work with before. He's in on it, you know, and he says, look, okay, I, I've heard the plan. I've heard the plot. It's great. Um, I think it's going to bloviate everyone. But the problem is, um, it's going to be too obvious uh, what we're trying to do. So we need some kind of um, distraction. We need some kind of some something that's going to make it like just not noticeable. And I've got an idea. It's, it's Christmas season coming up. Uh, holidays are, are here. We're, we're going to decorate the town. Um, and we were planning on putting lights up. I'm thinking that your machines that you guys are going to use these spherical blue uh, balls, essentially um, uh, blue balls are going to be hung up all over the place and sorry. And, um, and, and they're going to be used. Uh, these are like these, these solar powered arrays that will extract, you know, credit card data, um, you know, anything uh, magnetic in there and then, you know, cell phone that's unlocked, that kind of stuff and just pull it up into the cloud and upload it. But they need a bunch of them. And so the mayor says, look, everyone's going to notice them there. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to um, cause a scene by putting, you know, these Christmas decorations up. We're going to make big giant candles that go in between each of these bloviations. And that is going to be what people focus on because they're going to look somewhat phallic. But they're going to focus on that. Meanwhile, no one's going to question why there's a bunch of blue balls hanging out downtown. Um, And they'll walk by with their, you know, information, taking pictures of it, unlocking their phone, getting sucked up into the cloud. And that's how we're going to steal all their identities. Boom, done. Boom, done. Mm. Mm. (laughs) Okay. Mm. All right. You got to bring us home today. What's it going to be on the big blue spheres? So what I think is happening is that we have the city is what? Wiedenberg? Wiedenberg? Sure. Is a... is a city that's kind of in crisis. See, the men have been, you know, the, uh, society is getting like a little less, a little less masculine and a little less violent. And the men <clears throat> are eating a little more soy. You know what I mean? They're kind of having uh, uh, some confidence issues, if you will. And I think we're dealing with an entire city uh, of impotent men. Okay. It's just it's just catching, you know what I mean, and no one can figure out why, uh, you know, no one's able to perform uh, like they need to, and so what one uh, the mayor what he does he he's lying about not knowing that it was a phallic you know object obviously, what he did was he kind of went around and he asked all the 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 warlock and witch types and the soothsayers and. He eventually found a, a pagan uh, person who said, you know, I still kind of follow the old ways. And if you will make a an altar or a gigantic monument to uh, to Eros, you know, our old uh, uh, sex god Eros, uh, Eros will uh, will reward you guys and guys let you kind of have your, your, your masculinity back, let you have your manhoods back. Right. So. The mayor sets everything up, and uh, and he he sets all these phallic pillars and blue balls and all this stuff that's going on, and and he waits and he waits and and eventually in the middle of this square, Eros appears. You know what I mean? Thirty feet tall, you know, with a deep thundering voice, and he's just laughing. He's laughing. And he's laughing. And uh, the mayor says, "You know why? 
why are you laughing at us, man? There's nothing we can do right now. Our, our, our spouses are mad at us. There's nothing good going on. There's no more kids being created. And, uh, uh, you know, Eero says that, you know, I, I'm the god of fertility, but uh, I'm the one who took all of your guys' woodies away in the first place. Because I think it's funny to see humans roll around in the bed like impotent losers. And uh, so nothing good happened for them. And to this day, uh, they have not been able to maintain erections, although they are currently in talks uh, with Pfizer to use them as a sponsor for the town to try to make things better. So thanks. Okay. <laughs> I think it worked. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so don't forget to vote by comment. Uh, we need to know who won and you can help pick that person who won by voting by comment, which stories you liked below. Um, Nick is pointing at himself. I got to be honest with you, Nick. I don't think saying below V8 30 times during your last story is going to put you over the top. I, just, I, I mean, you never know, though, right? <laughs> <laughs> that's the spirit. There you go. Yeah, I tried. I tried hard. Yeah, that's a get her done spirit, man. Damn it, Lisa. Like it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know who MG is, but I don't think it's me. So that's that would be Max Get Her Done. John would be John's cousin. Which reminds me, if you didn't see last week's episode, episode thirty-one, which I'm pretty sure was your daddy, not your father, it's the episode. That is where John Gitterdun was invented, and I don't can't announce anything, but we have been having a little bit of um, fun with a John Gitterdun project behind the scenes. I don't know if that's ever going to see the light of day or anything, but maybe it will, and that would be pretty sweet. Uh, we want to remind you uh, to go to storyonthespot.live and subscribe to us in all the places. Our YouTube channel is going to be changing soon. It'll be at a different place. Don't worry about that. You don't need to Lisa had a good time, uh, which is all we really care about. If Lisa's happy, then it was a good show. And so thanks everyone for tuning in and we'll catch you next time. Later. Bye.